Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Golden Astrologer podcast. I am Deb McBride, and I am broadcasting from lovely Escazú, Costa Rica, where it has rained this afternoon, thankfully. And it is today, June 4th, a Sunday in the year 2023. And it's so amazing that it's June. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And yesterday we had the full strawberry moon at 13 degrees of Sagittarius. Now, strawberry, not in color, strawberry because the early Native Americans were harvesting or or seeing the strawberries ripen on the vine, um, on the shrub, when it was time for the full moon. So, here we are at the strawberry moon. It sounds it sounds lovely, right? It sounds like dessert. <laughs> a summer, an early summer, a late spring sort of dessert, maybe a strawberry mousse or a strawberry sorbet or something, right? <laughs> um, okay, so it's a strawberry full moon. But the full moon is in Sagittarius and the um, sun is in Gemini. And that's how full moons happen. Thus, the sign that we're experiencing the season of, which is Gemini, is where the sun is. And then the full moon is always the opposite uh, sign, which is in this case Sagittarius. And this is an interesting thing because the moon itself is in Sag and it's still in Sag and it is ruled by Jupiter. And if you recall, I have been talking extensively both here and on Instagram about Jupiter. Jupiter having gone into Taurus, Jupiter having conjunct the North Node just on Thursday the 1st, okay? So this was Jupiter conjuncting North Node in Taurus. So this is very important because it hasn't happened in seven years since early 2016 or the first half of 2016 because Jupiter went retrograde over that North Node and it was back and forth and the Node and Jupiter were connecting and off connecting and then connecting again. And, and so this is always some sort of turning point and I was talking about altering your destiny because it gives us an option. It, we can stretch and go there or we can not. <laughs> and your destiny is altered either way. If you say, no, no, thank you. I'm not going to take the job. I'm going to stay home. <laughs> Well, then you're going to stay home. And then you might later on go, shoot, I didn't take that job. And I needed to take that job. Or I wanted to take that job. Oh, it just didn't feel like I didn't feel like taking the job. But but you have to pull yourself out of the old and step into the new and what could potentially be the unknown for you. I wrote a blog about this yesterday. I posted it last night. You can find it on my website, thegoldenastrologer.com, on the page called Astrologer's Thoughts. You can scroll down to my bottom of my page and click on Astrologer's Thoughts, and it's right there. Um, and you can see that I talked extensively about Jupiter and the expansiveness of Jupiter and how we love when, you know, we love Jupiter. It gives us big things and beneficial things. And if you're expanding over your head uncomfortably, well, that's a different matter. But if you are expanding, that's just a stretch for you. It's worth a shot. What? Where you left off usually is always still there. You can always turn around and go back. But the important thing is that you take the leap of faith. Jupiter rules faith, as does Neptune. But Jupiter really involves that expansive awareness, that leap, that knowledge that, and Jupiter is about knowledge, that knowledge that we are opening the door to something greater in our lives. And this experience is so important because it takes us to the next level and it does alter our destiny. What if you said no to something? Did you ever have a moment? Okay, where were you in early 2016? What if you said no to the way you expanded then? I know I would not be happy if I hadn't, if I had said no and if I hadn't taken the leap of faith. You know, it doesn't mean you're going to fall flat on your face. It also doesn't mean you're going to have immediate like results like, yeah, money, power, fame, fortune, love, all of it. <laughs> it doesn't necessarily mean it's immediate. It means, okay, this is a little uncomfortable, but 
It's the next step in my own evolution. And the nodes are always destiny. We call them the nodes of fate. We call them the nodes of destiny. We are taking our fate in our own hands. Now, you should be in control of your own destiny, right? Don't you want to be in control of your own destiny? Don't you want to not leave destiny up to, like, whatever happens? <laughs> You want to sort of be consciously aware of the step towards your destiny and your fate that you are making, you know, that you, you're making the step and you want to be aware of it because you want to say, all right, I've consciously agreed with myself to take this next move. And so that's a beautiful thing. I have found that this you know, that was Thursday that Jupiter in the North Node conjunct, but this, this Sagittarius full moon has driven the message home. And it's a very optimistic, good feeling full moon. Okay, so enjoy it. Yeah, there's some Saturn involved, but Saturn is Saturn is not entirely involved because it's it's a it's a square, but it's not fully exact. Otherwise we'd really be feeling a lot harder about this and maybe not so optimistic. Saturn would be bringing in the, mm, but what if it doesn't work or the doubts and the responsibilities and the duties and, oh, it's too much responsibility for me to take that step. Well, maybe not, but we have to, we have to expand. We have to jump to the next level some point in our lives, right? Jupiter and the North Node don't happen that often. I saw that it was 2016. I saw before that it was 2009. So it was 2009. And before that it was 2001, not two, one. So it was eight years and maybe seven and a half, you know, because I think it was late later in 2001 and early in 2009. And so that's the last three that I looked up. I could have gone back further, but those were moments. Those are moments when you can, I, I remember things that happened and that I did and stuff that I took on and or decided against, you know, um, and it was fine. It was fine. It was good. It was fine. It was stretching me. It was fine. So it, asks us to please, please, please um, take a look at what's waiting for us on the other side. And isn't that exciting and wonderful? And don't you want to take part in that? You know, for me, the last one was Costa Rica, as I've mentioned before. Um, and then I can remember ones in 2009 to 2001. But you are, you are, expected at this point to take a little dive into expansion. One of my friends here got an amazing dream job for her business this week and she and her husband are in business together and they do branding and design and you know she's an architect and and she did some amazing work in this last week and it, it was a big yes to the job. Yes. And it wasn't like she was saying, well, you know what? I don't have time for this. She, it, she's at the right spot, the right point in her life and the right point within their business to take this on. So it sounds like she's got a lot of support. Her husband's certainly supporting her. She took a big trip this week to expand this work. Very exciting, very exciting. So, you know, this has been, this has been something that's going to be good for a lot of people. And I see a lot of people expanding at this point. So it is exciting. It is good. And, you know, um, Taurus, Taurus is a good place for Jupiter. You know, it, Jupiter doesn't have any rulerships or exaltations there, but Taurus is about abundance, you know, and more Taurus is more abundant earth, abundance of nature, but also the abundance we need to keep our lives secure, right? And our, our, financial responsibilities and stuff like that um, and our our expansion into our own abundance through our own skills and what we can do to make money. That's often Taurus and that feeling of security and having the roof over your head and the food on the table. And so Jupiter there is often fruitful, fruitful, and Taurus is a very fertile, fruitful oriented sign. So we like this. And so I... Um, 
and they're connected to the moon because Jupiter rules this full moon. It's not like Sagittarius and Taurus are that compatible, but really what we're looking at is this moon being, uh, you know, ruled by the Jupiter that is in this expansive place with the North Node. So this is the way we look at astrology. We look at the important things happening and who rules what and how that expands our life and how, how that affects us and how these things all sort of shake out. Very good. Now, let's talk about Venus. Venus rules Taurus, okay? So where Jupiter is and um, where Uranus is right now, they're both in the sign of Taurus, Okay, and we've been through a lot of Taurus season. We know we went into Gemini at the 20th or so of May, 20th, 21st of May. Before that, the sun was in Taurus. And Mercury has been in Taurus and went retrograde in Taurus. And now, as of Thursday, the same day that Jupiter conjunct the North Node, Mercury left its shadow in Taurus. And it passed the point where it had originally gone retrograde. So now... Mercury's in Taurus as still it's got the rest of the sign to go through and it'll just kind of fly through that for the next week or so before it goes into its own sign of Gemini next Sunday so we've only got another week left of Mercury and Taurus and Mercury is like pretty fast right now it's moving very quickly it's going to move through like really the second half of the sign within like 10 days so that's that's quick Mercury and so what's happening is that Venus, ruler of this Jupiter experience, where Uranus is, where Mercury is, is now herself moving out of the sign of Cancer tomorrow, early morning, and moving into the sign of Leo. And we have to talk about this because this is a big deal. So tomorrow at 9.46 a.m., not so early in the morning, um, Eastern time, it's going to be earlier for me, it'll be 7.46 in the morning, um, that's when Venus leaves Cancer. That's it. She's done with Cancer for the year 2023. She'll see you again, Cancer sign, in 2024. And she's going into Leo. She will stay in Leo till October 8th. So this is quite a journey. This is, here we are, it's June 5th tomorrow. The rest of June, July, August, September, up until October. Four months, four months of Venus in Leo. Fiery Leo. Venus gets to be the fiery goddess. Creative, so creative in the sign of Leo. However, why is she spending four months there? My goodness, that's a long time for Venus, who spends a month, six weeks, four months, four months. That's long. That's because she gets all the way to the end of Leo at about July 23rd, and she turns retrograde at, you know, the point of like 28 degrees Leo. So she's going through the whole sign of Leo, and then she's going to go all the way back till she gets to... Um, you know, September 4th when she's around, you know, the mid degrees of Leo. She will retrograde for the first time in a year and a half. The last time she was retrograde, I believe it was in Capricorn, the later degrees, because she was connected to Pluto. So she came to Pluto, she retrograded, she came back to Pluto, and there were some things with Capricorn, you know, Pluto, Venus, Capricorn, all at the end of 2021. So that was the end of 2021 into 2022 when she finally went direct the end of January 2022. And now here we are a year and a half later and she will retrograde on July 23rd. And so the interesting thing is that Venus, okay, so Leo is a fixed sign and Venus and Leo, like I said, creative, you know, fiery, passionate, but but we have to think about the whole zodiac because, and it's always interesting, when these planets do their little retrograde thing, they often get involved with the outer planets or sometimes Jupiter, sometimes Saturn as well, but Uranus and Neptune and Pluto. And why they do that is when a planet like Venus goes retrograde and she slows down, she talks to these outer planets in a way that 
because they're slow and they don't move very much in that four month period. They're, they're moving back and forth a little bit in that four month period, but they're not moving so far that while Venus makes this shift back and forth, she talks to the outer planets. And this is often, so Mercury was just, you know, talking to planets and, and last year we had Mars retrograde. Remember, Mars was involved with Neptune three times, okay? So this is what happens. When they move slowly, they can aspect, not always, but they can aspect um, things that are much slower moving planets. So Venus last time was talking to Pluto. This time she'll be talking to both Jupiter and Uranus. Now, I find this to be fascinating, and I want to tell you a little bit about it because it's going to, you know, once we get into tomorrow, Venus is in Leo, and she might start throwing us hints as to what this whole retrograde is about. Now, remember, I have my list of things of don'ts during Venus retrograde, and while this won't happen for another month and a half, you should be aware of this because now we're going to get into shadow periods and all that stuff, okay? Venus is not great to start a brand new relationship with a brand new person that you just met during the retrograde. So, you know, you're fine right now. You're on the sort of cusp of that, <laughs> the precipice of that. You're, you're not quite there yet, but it's not great to start a Venus retrograde relationship. It's not great to start a financial relationship during that time either. It's meant for putting things on sale. You know, like if you go get a sale, oh, that car that I wanted is down in price. That's a Venus retrograde good thing to do. Go into garage sales and finding discounts, getting discounts, getting deals, any of that stuff is really good for Venus retrograde. If you're trying to sell your house, well, I don't necessarily recommend putting it up for sale while Venus is retrograde. Put it up for sale now sometime in June. So not that you are, you know, getting this retrograde because if you put it up for sale in the retrograde, you might not get the price you want until after the retrograde is over. So it doesn't mean take the house off the market for those weeks. It just means that you're going to be disappointed. People might turn you down at your price and say, no, we can't do that. And you might not have buyers and then you might take a lower price and you, it, it gets complicated. So Back to Jupiter and Uranus. Jupiter and Uranus are both in Taurus. They're going to be there for a while. Uranus longer because it takes longer. And Jupiter is going to eventually make an exact conjunction with Uranus next year in 2024. But in the meantime, they're going to come relatively close to one another later this year at the end of the summer and into September and stuff. And they'll, they'll come close together but not quite exact. But they are both in Taurus, which is a fixed sign. Leo is a fixed sign where Venus will be, and Venus will then make a challenge because the fixed signs challenge one another. Even though they're all fixed, Venus will make a challenge to all these planets. So she'll challenge Jupiter. She'll challenge Uranus. And she will then make these relationships three times once going forward, once going backwards, last time going forwards. So I will be talking about these. This is not the final moment. Keep tuned in to me and you will learn as we go along and we will feel together as we go along what this is like. They are, Jupiter and Uranus are not together. They're separate. They're, they're within Taurus, but they are separate enough so that Venus will square Jupiter challenge on the 11th of June, which is next Sunday. She won't square Uranus until the 30th of June, okay? So this is the first set of squares. The next ones come in August, the final ones come in September. And then October 8th, she leaves Leo finally and goes into Virgo. So she likes being in Leo. Leo. She's, you know, feisty and juicy and flirty and flashy, you know, glamorous. And all that good stuff um, is going to feed this fire. And then she's going to be squaring Jupiter and Uranus. Now, Jupiter, Venus to Jupiter, can get a little, like, I could say vulgar, but maybe extensively flashy. Like, oh, I'm going to buy this revealing dress. I don't normally wear this, but why not? Buy it when Venus is direct. <laughs> 
Because if she, you buy it retrograde, by the time the retrograde's over, you might go, oh my God, what was I thinking? Oh, those colors are just, uh, that shows too much skin. I can't do that. Um, then she's a little disruptive when she squares Uranus, okay? So this is a little chaotic, a little surprising, a little out of the blue. Um, it is something we need to be aware of. And the important thing is to stay aware of this, okay? So you need to pay attention. I need to pay attention. We all need to pay attention. Next Sunday, when Venus makes her first square to Jupiter, you have to pay attention to what the story is that's unfolding at that time, okay? Because that is going to give us a narrative, a description, a story that we have in three chapters, the second part in August, the third part in September. And then when we get to the end of June, we're not there yet, thank God, um, <laughs> We just started. We're going to have another story that parallels the one with Jupiter. We're going to have this other story that goes with Uranus, which may be a lot more up and down. Okay. Now Venus and Jupiter, they get along fairly well, but we we still it's still a square, so it might be don't hedge your bets. You know, don't don't like go out and spend all your money and then go uh oh <laughs> what did I do you know, and just be, just be very consciously aware of how you handle this, okay, just be very consciously aware, and, um, so that, that's part of this, okay, so as we move through these weeks and months together, we'll be discussing at length of how this is going to look, and what this is going to feel like, and feel it, be very careful under Venus Jupiter. You might want to really spend money indulgently, okay? And then maybe Uranus comes in and says, you shouldn't have done that because now you've got a surprise bill from blah, 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 and the money you spent indulgently, you need to pay this other thing, okay? So just be aware. Venus is still money. She could be very fashionable in Leo, okay? Don't go out buying Gucci unless you know you've got lots of money to buy Gucci, okay <laughs> okay no no flashy unless you know absolutely you are safe to buy something flashy okay just stay focused and stay grounded and remember venus still rules taurus and the thing is that she is connecting to planets jupiter and uranus that are going to remain in taurus this whole time so they are living in her sign and she is challenging them. So this is, this could be some security, some money things that we might need to address during this time. It can also be relationship things we can need to address and it could be security oriented stuff. Okay, so let's stay focused. Let's stay aware and just be aware. Make sure you remember. Write it in your calendar. What happened on the 11th, which is next Sunday. Now, getting back to the rest of our astrology, um, tomorrow, before we finish with Venus, she is opposing Pluto. Now, if you're like me and you have a Venus-Pluto opposition in your chart, well, then you are going to usually have a recurrence during that time. It doesn't have to be a physical recurrence. It could be a dream that you have, but it rings chimes with what's in your chart. So Venus and Pluto are opposite. Now, this is, like I said last week, Persephone in the underworld, where there are some undercurrents of the underworld with Pluto coming into Venus. This is the first opposition of Venus in Leo and Pluto in Aquarius. Okay, Pluto's in Aquarius now for the moment, for the moment, because Venus goes into Leo 946 a.m. tomorrow Eastern time and then opposes Pluto at 1205 p.m. Eastern time. So while I'm having, getting up in the morning and having my breakfast earlier, I'll be having my Venus-Pluto recurrence. They are often um, things that we remember from relationships we've had. Uh, they are often together describing something that is somewhat in the subconscious, underworld, things that are not seen, things that are not in the light of day. And what happens? Pluto's secrets too, like secret relationships, um, secret passions, holding passions for people, 
that maybe it's a little dangerous to have a passionate feeling for, okay? There's triangles. There's, um, you know, things that are maybe a little bit discreet or not discreet or, <laughs> you know, that we are we're messing around with. So be careful when you are interacting with people tomorrow, no matter who you are, because you might throw out a sentence and not mean to, and you might say something and it's like, oh my goodness, that was inappropriately flirtatious. I didn't mean that. Oh dear. So be careful. <laughs> your gestures, your words, things can come out and be, you know, Venus is a little wild when she's in Leo. And what an amazing aspect. Like, immediately she's in Leo and she's like, okay, who can I seduce? <laughs> because she's opposite Pluto. It's like, okay, it's only lunchtime. Who can I seduce <laughs> on a Monday? <laughs> this isn't happening on a Friday night at midnight. This is happening on a Monday morning. So let's not start our week regretting the things we do, okay? <laughs> And, you know, there's triangles, there's a little danger. Like I said, it's, it's things that are sometimes not in our conscious control. And just be aware. Awareness is always the answer, you know. Energy is always the answer. Everything's energy. And it, you can walk down the street and be flirted with by a perfect stranger, no matter who you are. Flirted with by a perfect stranger and you're like, wow, should I, should I take them up on that? Be just, just be aware. Be aware tomorrow, okay? How you use your energy. It's, it's very important. Um, and she's ruling all that. You remember, she still rules. Even though she's in Leo, she still rules the things in Taurus. And there's lots of wild energy in Taurus. So let's just take things one step at a time. And if you do feel a flirtation or you do sense some, like, illicit thing happening around you, just... Take it down a notch, okay? <laughs> and meanwhile, in the rest of the astrology world, Pluto, who is in Aquarius right now, is going to change signs next Sunday, the next time we meet, 5.47 a.m. Eastern Time, back into the sign of Capricorn. And that is not Aquarius. You know, Pluto back in Capricorn has a job to finish the rest of this year until January of next year. So we've had this great run in Aquarius and now we've got to go finish up the duties and responsibilities assigned to us with Pluto and Capricorn. So the story of the last 15 years, whatever you've been dealing with, whatever you've been working on, whatever has surfaced for you, we need to kind of go back and work through the last pieces of that it's going to go back into Capricorn one more time at the end of 2024, but it's very brief. But this is another six months of Pluto and Capricorn. So we need to pay attention to this and really just, you know, even if we've moved on, it's like, it's like when you say, okay, I've accepted the new job and now I've got to go back, you know, because I gave notice at my old job, I have to go back and clean up my job, you know, the, and prepare it for the next person to take it over. It's that kind of feeling. It's all right. Well, I've accepted the new home and now we've got to go sell our old home. Okay. We, uh, I've accepted my new place. I've got to clean up the last pieces of the old home. And so that's what we need to do. And we've been living with Pluto and Capricorn for the last 15 years. But now that we've had a taste of Pluto and Aquarius and that freedom, that liberation, that revolutionary vibe, we are going to go back. It's gonna, I think it's going to be a little easier to step through this and just say, okay, I know what I need to do because really my, my, I belong now in, in Aquarius and I'm just here to finish, like, you know, clean the house before I move out. That's all. And it's not something that's, I don't think is going to be terribly dramatic. A lot of those things happened already before March 23rd, before Pluto went into Aquarius, and some of those things were like the banks and things, um, banks closing and stuff. So there may be a little more of that. But, you know, again, awareness is key. And staying staying with 
um, the job and finishing it very nicely will be very important for each of us. Mercury will go into its home sign of Gemini, as I mentioned earlier, next Sunday, the 11th. So we've got lots going on next Sunday, which we'll continue to talk about when I meet with you again next Sunday. And we are also looking at... Um, Mercury and Pluto, it's interesting. Pluto will have stepped back into Capricorn. Mercury will have finished up Taurus, and they'll meet and make the very nice trine aspect next Sunday, which is a lovely communicative relationship that they'll have before Mercury then steps into Gemini, you know, exactly one minute later. So Mercury will trine Pluto at 6.26 a.m. Eastern Time, and we'll enter Gemini at 6.27 a.m. Eastern Time. <laughs> so, and Pluto will enter Capricorn 5.47 a.m. Eastern Time, as I mentioned. So there's, there's a lot of shifting and changing next Sunday, and we pay attention because Jupiter and Venus will be in that, in that challenge. Um, and that's basically it. We have had our full moon. I feel like the energies from the full moon will still be with us for the next couple days. Use this buoyant, optimistic energy to go out and enjoy some time with your friends, with your family, with your loved ones, uh, colleagues, and just use this time to be optimistic and take your life in this new expansive direction, okay? It's so important to feel that destiny moment, even if it's a small one, even if it feels really kind of like, okay, this is an opening, I'm going to take it. It's a new road that's appearing before each of us. And this new road is important for us to recognize and step out on as we experience Jupiter in the North Node. Okay, the moon is still in Sag till tomorrow, 3.30 a.m. when it enters Capricorn, Eastern Time good for a Monday to have the moon in Capricorn. We get down to business right away and maybe it'll keep us grounded during that Venus-Pluto opposition. <laughs> and then Capricorn for a couple days then moves into Aquarius. The moon will conjunct Pluto in Aquarius on Wednesday at 4.48 a.m. Eastern time. And the moon and Pluto have not met many, many times in Aquarius yet, but this will be the last time that the moon and Pluto do meet in Aquarius before Pluto goes back into Capricorn next Sunday, okay? So it's good. We're getting one more moon Pluto in, get that vibe of Aquarius energy, and then the moon will enter Pisces on Friday, and it'll be a Piscean moon weekend until Sunday morning when it goes into Aries. So there's lots of movement at the end of the Zodiac this week. If you have planets and signs that are pertinent to you, in Capricorn and Aquarius and Pisces, you're going to feel the moon moving through your sign because it will touch those planets and they always get a little more emotional in the, in the week. And that's about it. I'm Deb McBride. This is the Golden Astrologer podcast. You can reach me at my website, thegoldenastrologer.com. You can uh, book a session on that website at Book Online on thegoldenastrologer.com. You can reach me through email at deb at debmcbride.com or info at thegoldenastrologer.com if you have any questions or comments or anything or just want to say hi. And you can find me on Instagram at thegoldenastrologer where I put videos and information as we go through the week because things feel different as they're happening than they do on Sunday when I'm talking about them that, you know, if something's happening on Thursday, it's going to feel different than how I presented it on Sunday, right? There's going to be energy that I wasn't aware of yet. And let me tell you that Jupiter North Node, I had people asking me, wow, the energy is so intense. What is this? And I didn't expect it to be intense. And that was a surprise for me. It was intense. It was like over the top, like big energy, like big step into the next level energy. But it was still intense. It was like getting the message home in a major way that I would not have necessarily guessed it was that. So it's it was things just keep coming at people, but good things, you know, like stretchable things, things that make you stretch. So yes, so tune into my Instagram for further details. And if you'd like to join me in expansion mentoring, then please contact me, at one of my emails, or um, ask me any questions you have about that. Mentoring is um, a three-month process initially, and then if you want to continue, we can do that. 
And other things I do are definitely Reiki and astrology sessions. So would you like to join me in that? Please book a session with me at my website. Thank you so much for listening. Have a beautiful, beautiful week. Enjoy Venus Pluto. Watch your flirtatious energy and a gratitude to all for listening. Have a beautiful week.